We have Dr. Rajiv joining us. He's a vice uh, chairman of Research Cell IMA Kerala, Kerala state, which has managed to really, uh, you know, turn around the COVID story, managed to isolate, managed to treat people at home. So we'll take some good learnings from him. He asks, uh, how do you ascertain the severity of COVID-19 for it to be able to be treated at home? I think this is a very important basic question. More and more doctors right now are saying not everybody needs to be in the hospital, but who needs to be at home? How do you qualify that? Uh, Dr. Rajiv, if you could answer that for us, please. Yes, the severity of COVID-19 is a is a significant topic here. Hmm. Uh, and remember that these uh, patients are being seen uh, and triaged over the phone or by a video call. So um, we just have to go with basic demography first. Someone who is older will be at greater risk to have severe disease. And if someone is younger, they're less likely to have severe disease. So that will be the biggest uh, uh, differentiating factor between these two. And then people who are triaging this patient will have experience having talked with other patients in the same format. Mm. So uh, obviously, if it's a new person who is doing the triage, he'll be, he or she will be assisted by someone of experience. Mm. So uh, by the patient's profile itself, the number of comorbidities the patient has, in other words, how many other kind of illnesses the patient mm. has, how does the patient look? Uh, so that is, a, when you eyeball the patient, what does the patient look like? Are they in distress? So those are some of the basic things that one can do. Hmm. And then there are what's called the vital signs. The vital signs are, as you know, they're, they're the pulse, the oxygen saturation, and hmm. the blood pressure, and also the temperature. So hmm. these are some of the parameters that the uh, people who are doing the tele uh, monitoring hmm. can use to assess the severity. Okay. And as, over a period of time, they do see the patient's progress and they have a baseline assessment of the patient. Hmm. And if there's a significant change in baseline, the people who run the helpline, for example, in Cochin, we have a very large helpline. We've gone, got over lakhs of calls hmm. over, the, hmm. over the past one year, serviced over 50,000 patients. So, right. so these people have a dedicated team of personnel who are, hmm. who are uh, a large group of people, mostly youngsters. And hmm. many of them are not even doctors. So they are all people who are, who are there to help out the community. And they're people from the government sector and the public sector right. and all of them together. Okay. Them. okay, let's take the next question. now. Let me take the next question now, also very pertinent, something that I get asked very frequently from Saurabh. He says, when does one need to go for a CT scan? Dr. Rajiv, if you could answer that, please. Yes, a CT scan is a test that looks at the, in this case, we are looking at the lungs here. Uh, it can see things that a chest X-ray cannot see. So mm. that is where the question comes from. So if you have a patient who is uh, having a symptom that is suggesting of lung disease or lung involvement, we know that some people with COVID-19, regardless of their age, can get a bit of lung involvement early on. And mm. to correctly separate these people from those without lung involvement, in certain instances, a CT scan is needed, but I can tell you, among all the COVID-19 patients, the number of people who need a CT scan right. is very, very but small. But can you give us an example, Dr. Rajiv? Say somebody's yes. contracted COVID, they have yes. fever, and they're, mod they're checking, they're keeping it under check. It's say fifth day or sixth day when fever is getting under control, but only after medication. Would you yes. say that after a week of proper medication, if the fever is still not under check, then people should go for a CT scan? This depends on the treating team. There is okay. a team of people who's looking after the patient hmm. who are already, as I mentioned, familiar with the patient's baseline. And the baseline, as I mentioned, is extremely important because hmm. each patient has a different baseline. True. So when hmm. the team or if the team hmm. suspects that this patient is having hmm. a clinical deterioration that hmm. they can detect, hmm. which they can't explain by other means. I'll explain what the commonest reason for deterioration is anxiety. As, yes. um, as the doctors here have already said, the mm. commonest reason for, um, for being short of breath is mm. anxiety because you know people are afraid of COVID and anyone would be afraid sitting at home. So the first thing to determine is mm. to calm the patient down mm. to see if it's a genuine case of shortness of breath. And mm. if it's a genuine case of shortness of breath- Essentially let your you doctor don't, decide. Absolutely. Don't, you don't, don't pre-decide. Don't pre-decide, let your doctor take that call whether or not you need a CT scan or not. People in the house, who don't have COVID, 
but are staying in the same house with a person infected, isolated. Should they start on those vitamins as well, not knowing if at all it's going to spread, especially with the new variants when it is spreading in the entire family at all? Right. So we leave it there. Uh, thank as you. The doctors have said it is absolutely there is no hmm. evidence that vitamins have hmm. anything to do with COVID-19. Let me hmm. get that absolutely clear. Yeah. Right. Now there are there are certain instances when a patient can be deficient in a vitamin. Hmm. That has nothing to do with COVID-19. And if hmm. such a patient was found to be deficient. Hmm. Definitely yes. Otherwise, all that vitamins do is to make expensive urine. Hmm. All right. Uh, thank you, all three of you, for joining us with that very important advice. Uh, we understood perhaps that this is the time when everybody is very anxious. So the quick takeaway over here is do not rush to the hospital just because you've tested positive. Do watch out for symptoms. Don't wait for result as that is key now. More and more with variants coming in. And do take the advice of your doctor before you rush in for a CT scan or anything else. Follow their advice. Stay calm. We'll perhaps get out of all of this quite stronger. Thank you all for joining us.